Okay, so I'm pleased to now say I'm uh, joined by Joe Andrews. Welcome, Joe. Hi, Callum. You all right? I'm very well, thank you. Um, first of all, if you'd like to introduce yourself and uh, your involvement within ground racing. Yeah, sure. So I'm just a fan of ground racing, really. Obviously, I co-host the Gone to the Dogs podcast with Danny, Danny Jackson, um, and I'm an owner as well. Got four, four dogs at the moment, uh, annual Sydney, Lively Lauren, Lively Savannah and Lively D. Um, so, yeah, and as I said, other, other than that, I'm a fan and I'm, a, I'm an occasional punter as well. So I uh, love the game. And with that, you've also got some selections for us to uh, take a look at over not only this weekend, but hopefully they will last throughout the competition. You've got a couple of anti-post prices for us. Um, should we kick it off with Clona Duke? Yeah, so I've got a, a saying to you off 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 camera, if you will, I back Clona Duke at 33 to one. Um, I've, I've put that up on my Twitter account and stuff like that, but he's, he's been well backed. I mean, he, he, um, he equaled the track record, I think, uh, over in Ireland, um, when he ran in the, in the Kirby, I think it was, but then he got knocked out as he didn't make it, but obviously that showed his, his class. Um, and I know he is a dog that, that connections like, so I jumped on the price at the time, 33s. He's about 12 to 1 now, 14s. I, I don't think I'd back him at that price, to be honest, but I'm really happy to have him as part of my, my kennel this year, part of my team um, in the in the outright market, for sure. Yeah, I'm, Graham Holland's bringing probably the hottest team he has done, including his uh, returning champion, Romeo Magico. Swords Rex has also bettered the track record recently. Your second selection... Um, the, the the next one I really like Fabulous Azora. Um, she's just a, a really ultra consistent bitch. It didn't quite happen for her in the Oaks final, but um, you know she she's got fantastic early pace, which will stand her in good stead in the Derby. She sees the trip out, and she's just got a touch of class. Um, she's coming back from a season. She's undefeated since she's come back from a season, showing that she's in great heart. Um, she's quite you know relatively lightly raced as well since she has as well. So I think she's one that. It's going to get better as the as the rounds progress if she does make it through. Um, and I think she's a solid 66 to 1 poke um, that should give you a good run for your money. And I believe she was actually last seen in um, action just before her season in the Brighton Bell, um, which she was eventually withdrawn. You also had a, a runner in that final, didn't you? Yeah, lively Lauren. Yeah, she came second in the Brighton Bell final, which was fantastic. Unfortunately, she was a bit slowly away from the traps and she stayed on like a... A train but didn't quite uh reach uh the winner um yeah she was withdrawn from the semi-final actually uh just before i think there was an issue with a paw um and she was withdrawn on, on vet's advice but i think patrick janssen's was wasn't very happy with with that i think she was he said she was fine so she's in good heart i think she's what she's won since as well um and um yeah as i said she's just a, a really really nice bitch um and hopefully we'll see some of her puppies one day because i think she'll throw a nice one and then moving on to uh, your third selection. Yeah, Distant Podge, definitely. He's really, he's a Cat 1 winner in his own right. He's really shown his liking for Toaster. Again, he's got fantastic early pace. Um, he's been clocking 4.11 twice, 4.07, 4.06. He's thrown in a 4.18 there, but even that's quicker than a lot of these dogs would do. Um, and, he, and he's just, as I said, it's not just his early. You know, he really likes the 500 at Toaster and he's put in some very very quick times around the 29 dead mark. So I think he'll he'll go far and, and he could definitely win it. And he's 40 to one at the moment. When you're looking at the the, the dogs outside of your sort of 20 to one and below bracket, I think he, you know, he's a really fair price. Um, and hopefully he, he, he can go far and hopefully win it. And equally, you've uh, you've also come with Bally McFinn, a, a dog I'm, I'm a big fan of, especially following him uh, right through to the the Irish Derby final last year. How do you think he's going to go? I think he's going to go really well. Um, he, he's 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 trialed he's trialed well again. He's shown he's in good heart and he's liking for Toaster. Um, but yeah, as you said, second in the Irish Derby final behind Born Warrior, who unfortunately won't be running in the in the English Derby here. But um, you know he's a class act. We know how strong the Irish dogs are. He's one of their best. And and again, when you're looking at the fancied runners, he's still twenty to one, which I think is a cracking price. You've got from Post to Pillar and and Swords Rex, who have got 
obvious chances, but they're around sort of eight to one, ten to one. He's double the price of those, and I think he's got just as much of a chance as, as those two dogs. They were a little bit too short in the betting for my liking now, although I fully respect them, and I wouldn't, you know, no one would be surprised if either of those won. And he'll be one to follow tomorrow or today, whichever time this uh, video goes up, he, he'll go in heat, heat eight. Um, got a great draw in one as well, to be fair. I'm now pleased to say that Dave Clark is joining us from the Racing Post. First of all, welcome, Dave. Hi, Callum. Yeah, looking forward to it. I'm like a kid at Christmas on the eve of the derby. And um, hopefully you'll be providing some selections for us to, to follow during the derby campaign. Um, fingers crossed mate yeah some couple of big prizes as well so anything in particular that you'd like to start with uh right well a lot of people think i'm mental uh but i'm going with lataro at 66 to 1 i think the dog is grossly overpriced um he narrowly missed out last year of course finished fourth in his semi-final having smashed the track record in the first round which is kind of the epitome of the dog, if you like, he, he can be hot and cold, good and bad. But when he's good, um, I know Patrick wouldn't swap him for anything. So I think he matured a little bit. Um, he's been lightly raced. He's been kept off the track by Patrick and his team by design. Um, there's not been any issue. Um, so he's, he's fresh. He's ready to rumble. He's trialled well. Um, and with a little bit of luck, I thought we could go all the way. I think it'd be a hard dog to keep out of the frame. Is he is he one of your mo most favoured picks for this this campaign he would be yeah just purely on the price i mean i the, the likes of swords rex and from post to pillar and, and those kind of dogs have got leading claims of course they have but they, they don't take much finding and the ground derby is a superb betting heat you know so a competition that you can get stuck into the each way terms are favorable um you can go in again after the the first round and the each way terms are, are good um so i always kind of look for dogs where you can get a a bit of bang for your buck in the place part of an each way bet. Because once you get to the final, you know, you cop. So I remember I had a really good bet on uh, Charlie Lister's Dorota's uh, Vic, it was, in the Wildcat final. He got uh, three figures, you know, and another strong tie. A bit little, his running style probably similar to Lataro a little bit. Keep qualifying, you know, can, can take a little bit of hustle and bustle. And then sort of durable dogs are, are what you're looking for. Lovely. So second up in your selections, what have you got? Right. Second up is going to be Rioka Joey for Kevin Hutton, a man who, who knows what it takes. I just mentioned that the Wildcat won the Toaster Derby in 2018. Very similar kind of mould of a dog. Um, I know he was very well back to win the Monmore Puppy Derby. He narrowly missed out on in the semi-final. And he's another one. Very little mileage on the clock. He was sensational in a trial stake. Good early pace. He'll be a case of, of catch me if you can. You know, he, there's been plenty of chat about sort of sectional markets. And, and if this dog hits the hole, like he will go to the bend as, as quick as anything. He'll be as fast as anything into the, the third turn as well. And again, with a little bit of luck, trap draws are always going to be, you know, a big part of the derby. You get one or two favourable trap draws and all, you, all of a sudden you find yourself sort of in the, in the quarterfinals and a big player. And I think he's a dog that can come forward He's got blistering early pace and, and with one or two uh, lucky draws, I thought he could go really, really deep as well. And I think he's quite a big price as well. I think he's about 40 to one. So Rioka Joey to, to serve it up to them. Well, I've jotted him down as one of my heat winners, which uh, I'll be posting a little bit later on. But... Very short, I think, Callum, but he's, he's yeah. a good thing. Anyway, for your third selection... OK, well, I'm hoping that all is well in, in uh, the Patrick Janssen's camp because I'm going to put up another one of his dogs. Um, I'm going to put up Delish Frankie, very similar to Lotaro. Uh, he's a similar price as well. I think he's about 66 to 1. And he finished behind... Um, who was he? I think he might have been in a different semi-final, but he got knocked out of the same stage last year as well. They both exited at the semi-finals. I don't think they was in the same semi-final. Um, and again, another dog who's, who's been kept off by design. I don't think there's been any issue there. Um, I think he's a dog that probably does his best racing in races rather than trials because he's put one or two moderate trials in. Um, he was beaten recently, uh, but he battled on well. I think that was down at Hove, if I remember rightly. Um, and he's a dog, you know, when he won that Monmore Puppy Derby last year, he looked like a dog that was probably a dog at his best off the front. I'm not so sure that's the case now. He, he showed me during the derby last year that he was getting stronger, staying on and 
we know that that 500 metres is a, a demanding trip. So not a dog that needs to lead, Delish Frankie, but he can lead. And another one, if he hits the leads, he'll be away and gone. The caveat with him is I don't like his first round draw. I think he's in two and Bubbly Apache is having his first ever race out of trap one. Um, so providing Delish Frankie can kind of tread carefully around the first bend, I think he'll qualify. And then another one, you know, Patrick's dogs, Lataro and, and Delish Frankie, I think a big price is at 66 to one. You know, if they come out, put a couple of big runs in, you know, they'll be right there. They'll be sort of 16 to one in the market. And all of a sudden we're clutching sort of tasty each way plays. He, he knows what he's doing as well. And he'll probably line them up for this Derby uh, campaign. So um, it'll be interesting to see how they go. Is there anything more on the, the larger scale of, of odds that could have a potential chance of maybe going through a couple more rounds? Uh, usually I like one or two at, at massive prices, but I, I, I don't actually, to be honest with you. That's as, as big as I go, the sort of 66 to 1 this year. I think Patrick's got a great team. You know, in, I don't know what price he is to win it. I'm sure there's sort of a some sort of special team Janssen's out there. You know, he's got Fabulous Azura and Slick Sakina. Uh, Romeo Command, I think, is probably his best chance. Um, you know, he looks like a versatile dog in, in terms of the trap draw, which you're going to need. If you're back in a railer, you need to be back in a railer that can probably do it out of one, two, three and four. So, yeah, as ever, the the, the trap draws will be crucial, you know, and, and some questionable seedings, dogs wider than they perhaps want to be, but might serve those dogs well you know because if things get tight on the inside even if a dog's coming in you know you might get a run around the outside and is there anything in particular on the Irish scene that has maybe interested you coming across the waters I really like um, Crypto Punk it was a semi-finalist in the Irish Derby um, Graham Holland looks like he's got a good team and a dog that interests me who's has crossed the Irish Sea but is not now running for an Irish trainer is uh, Mark Wallace's YI man. Um, I think it's got good early pace and you'd back the champion trainer to at least hold the dog's form and dare I say it, maybe get a bit of improvement out of him as well. So an interesting dog there. But I think the the man or lady at the end of the lead is, is a, a big part that sometimes gets un, overlooked when people are punting on the derby. You know, Kevin Hutton, Mark Wallace, Patrick Janssen's, Graham Holland, all... Paul Hennessy, all these big names, top, top trainers. You, you know yourself, Callum, working in a kennel, um, preparing and recovering a dog as well to do it kind of five, six times in a row shouldn't be overlooked. So it's not by coincidence that the top trainers all end up there at the end and, and the very best ones win it. OK, I'm now pleased to say I'm joined by Billy Brennan, uh, a long-time uh, owner um, of the sport. And hopefully you'll be providing some insights on some of your better selections for this year's Grey on Derby. Uh, kicking it off with your first one, should we go with Romeo Command? Yeah, we'll start off with Romeo Command, Callum. Um, thanks for invite, inviting me on. Um, yeah, I, I, I got a message to bet this dog probably eight, nine months ago, um, at 100 to 1. Um, fully ignored it. Um, then he's done some flashy times. I think we've not in him on one more. Um, and the person who gave me the, the information said, uh, did you take the 100? He just flew around one more. I said, no, no, never. He said, oh, I'll take the 66 and 50 if I was you. So I snapped up a bit of the 50s. I missed the 666. Um, but yeah, I, I, he's a machine to me. I, I, I said, I, I, I bet him from 50s, 40s, 33s. I missed the 28s. I think I missed 25s and ended up take, taking 20s. Um, but no, I think if he wins a Derby, I... David, no one will be seeing me for, for a few good months. I'll have a nice holiday somewhere, thanks to Patrick Jensen and the dog. Um, but yeah, no, like I said, I, I, I'm, I'm with command. Um, I can't really have from post to pillar. I know there's a lot of uh, criticism on social media about him being a wide runner. Um, he ain't a wide runner for me. I, I think he's going to get caught out on the... I think the early rounds, I think he'll be okay. Also, his first round, I think, is fine. I think the second round could, could be okay. But then when it comes to the third round, quarters set, semi, I think that's when sort of a fast dog will be up his inside if he, if he is still drawn six. I think that's when it'll catch him out. Um, so, yeah, apart, apart from that, really, at, at the top, top of the market, obviously, Swords Rex, do you want to be betting a, a, 
a track record holder at 10 to 1 to go six rounds of the derby at that short, not for me. Um, so apart from that, Callum, I think, yeah, Roman Command's my main bet. Um, and I was quite interested in Slick Sakina. Um, obviously, she trialled last week. Um, Patrick says there's still a lot more to come on from her, obviously, because she's 14, 15 weeks of the season, so obviously she's bang on. Um, she was 80 to 1 with Star Sports, and it's fair play to Billy Hennessy. I asked, I asked for a decent bet at 80s each way, and he laid it. Um, then I went into Cobble, and, and Danny Jordan and James Price laid me 66. Um, now she's obviously 40s, uh, 50s, 33s, whatever she is. So, yeah, I think I think Sakina could be a, a sort of a, a, a decent each way bet to keep qualifying. She's got the early. We know obviously what she's won for her previous CV. Um, so, yeah, they're, they're the two main ones, really, Kamal and Sakina. If they're both in the final, then I don't know where I'll end up on the Sunday. I'll be jetting off somewhere because they're, they're staying into a nice few quid. So, yeah, Kamal and Sakina for me, the two main ones. And you've also got a couple coming over from the Irish scene um, in both Crypto Punk and Mustang Jet. Are they probably more your each way and... Um, more each way at the prices, really. I think Crypto that. Punk... Yeah, I think Crypto Punk, like I said, was 100. Um, I, I think he's a very decent, good bet for the first round. I think it was 11 to 10 with 365. Um, drawn in three. I think he could easily lead. I think he could go a long way. And the man's the end of the league, Graham Holland, he knows how to win a, win a derby or two over here, or he knows how to win a classic over in Ireland. And I think at the prices, I think 100 to 1 was far too big. I was expecting him to be about 33, 40, maybe 50. Um, that was that. And then the other Irish one is uh, a young lady, but I don't go in the name of Dolores Roof. She knows how to train a, a derby winner as well. Um, obviously, she's got two runners in this year, Tully Graven, who obviously she's purchased off of Pat Buckley. Um, I think that could be making up the numbers for Mustang Jet. Um, but I like this dog. I like this dog a lot. I was talking to Ian Fortune today. And yeah, 66 to 1 for me is rather big. So he stays. If he, if he comes away, he leads. He's a wide runner, so 99.9% of the time he's going to be in five or six. Yeah, I think to me that is a standout price as well. So, yeah, the top one would be uh, Command. Second in Sakina. Third, I'd probably go Jet. And then, obviously, lastly, the each way better be Crypto Punk. Massive price. 